In your career, you would hear many suggestions such that get an internship. What is it? It's a temporary period of work experience offered by companies and typically performed by students. You get both paid and unpaid internships and internships can provide you hands-on experience in your desired field along with a clearer understanding of how businesses in that industry operate. Many will tell you get an internship even if it's unpaid, it's great experience and so you do it. Lost in all this is what they won't tell you how to turn all that hard work into a full-time job. Well, first of all, to go from intern to employee, you will need to do more than just deliver great performance. Interns think, if I just do great work for my supervisor, I'll get job. But that's not necessarily the case. So unlike the advices which you may have been getting, I'm going to clearly lay out exactly what you need to parlay your internship into a full-time job. Isn't that what you've been looking for all this whole, whole time? So let's dig in biotechnicals. The first point is make your inter intentions clear. Sit down with your supervisor when the internship starts and clearly articulate your goals. You can say my goal is to perform at such a high level that I get a full-time job offer. Your manager isn't a mind reader. So don't assume he or she knows that you want a job. Some college students only take up an internship to gain experience, acquire certain skills or test that what it's like to work in a particular industry. Additionally, you can also meet with a representative in HR to express your intent is to get hired. Human resources is going to hear of entry level job openings well in advance of the job being posted. So that's an important step. Next point is solicit feedback from your supervisor. Many managers are uncomfortable providing feedback to interns, but you will need input from your manager or your supervisor to improve upon your skills and prove that you're worth hiring. Make the situation less awkward for your supervisor by taking the lead. Say, I want to know uh, you to know that I don't, I, I have very thick skin. I'm here to learn and improve. So please never feel uncomfortable or don't hesitate to give me constructive criticism. And moreover, you can ask your supervisor or manager for a midterm performance evaluation to identify your strengths and weaknesses. And you take the opportunity to highlight your achievements thus far. Don't rely on your supervisor to keep track of your accomplishments. Ideally, they should regularly meet with you and provide you with small feedback. If they don't, feel free to suggest such an option. Like five minutes of their time every week will not be a huge sacrifice on their part, but it could prove extremely valuable to you. And during those short meetings, go over the last week's targets or the tasks together along with your achievements and failures in completing them whether you were successful or where you could have done better. Analyze why certain things did or didn't work out and identify areas for improvement. Next point is step outside your department. Don't limit your interactions to only your direct supervisor and immediate peers. Your particular boss may not have the power to offer you a job when the internship ends, but a manager in another part of the company may be able to hire you. So you can meet with hiring managers by requesting informational interviews. Like, uh, do you have a spare half hour for me to stop by and learn more about what uh, your team does? Or you will gain institutional knowledge, gain visibility and begin building meaningful relationships. Granted, your fellow interns may be meeting with the same people and um, it can last, it can leave a more lasting impression with a simple trick, get your business cards. The company probably won't give, you, give them to you as an intern, but you need to have your own cards and hand them to people so you can maintain communication and show you're already a professional. Additionally, you can make use of uh, um, of some events that are taking place in any other department and you can also volunteer and make some casual settings to meet employees who wouldn't normally be you be exposed to so keep your eye on the company newsletter so you can take advantage of those events helping out other departments wherever possible it will bolster your portfolio and not only that it will encourage others to want to vouch for you when it actually matters 
Next is establish your reputation. Once you have established a track record of delivering excellent work, ask if you can accompany your boss to a certain executive meeting. You can also sugarcoat your request by offering to take notes. Before the meeting, introduce yourself to attendees one-on-one. -on -one. Then when you run into people in a hallway at the water cooler or something, initiate conversation. Like, uh, hey, some, uh, hey, XYZ, it was great meeting you yesterday. I enjoyed learning more about our target customer from your presentation. Something like that. Next point is show that your work cannot be replaced. Provide consistent quality work so supervisors know that they can rely on you. Don't just follow orders and do the bare minimum. Everyone can do that. If all you do is just go with the flow, your supervisors won't even notice if it's you doing or someone else. Your job as an intern is to stand out. Of course, uh, I'm not saying that you should abandon your basic duties and try to get into uh, some hands-on tasks that exceed your qualification. Just make sure to take the extra step with whatever you do. If your task is to research a topic, don't just list the information you have found. Analyze it and deliver a thought-through report. Don't provide others with raw ingredients that they have to process. Demonstrate that you are capable of processing them yourself and you are saving their time. They will definitely appreciate it and take notice of the contribution you bring to the teamwork. So go above and beyond. Don't abandon basic duties and do more than expected. Next point is show genuine interest in your work. Tackle easy repetitive tasks with enthusiasm. How you approach certain tasks is almost as important as getting them done on time. Interns will sometimes have to perform easy repetitive and also sometimes tedious tasks as well. Make sure to approach those with enthusiasm. Show your employer how grateful you are to play any role at all in their operation. This can help set you apart from the crowd when leveraging a full-time position in the future. Identify issues not currently being addressed by the organization. So you can let them know that uh, by finding out those critical points, you care for the organization and you are a crucial point for them and they might be impressed by with that. Always be try to be a proactive learner, very curious and uh, very enthusiastic, always trying to grab whatever you have in front of you. Display capacity and flexibility. That is, you have to display adaptability. You have to let them know that you can. You have to take responsibilities. And also, you have to be a little flexible, maybe on the time or the uh, job profile. Exhibit willingness to work hard. Supervisor loves ability to excel and also your malleability in as an intern. And on top of that, if you are showing that you are ready to work hard for the organization, then, de then definitely it's a cherry on top. Next point is stay curious and ask questions. In your meetings with your manager, it doesn't hurt to prepare a few questions that don't directly have to do with your work that you're tasked with. Some examples could be uh, things you wonder about the uh, organization culture or other departments or any others you might have uh, the span wider. You could ask uh, about company best practices or the projects that other people are working on in their respective departments. Maybe think about the company's goal for that quarter and ask what they have decided to go down that path. Now that said, be mindful about the questions that you are asking. You want to make sure you are contributing to and not taking away from the conversation. So some examples are here task related questions. They will help you clarify assignments and increase your probability of doing them well. There is no harm in double checking your understanding of what is expected of you. For example, when you are asked to pitch ideas for a meeting, ask your manager if you are expected to provide a write-up or give a short presentation. This shows that even though you are new, you are thorough. Next are insightful questions. They are great ways to spark conversation between colleagues and motivate people to think outside of their usual boxes. Like for example, asking about your company's competitors, goals or customers or bringing up exciting industry trends when you and your team are trying to solve a difficult problem can help ground people in your mission and even inspire new ideas or ways of thinking. On the other hand, stay clear of lazy question, ones that you can research on your own but too lazy to find out and that's your asking or even ill-timed questions, ones that are off-topic or disruptive, that can end up working against you. 
Next, a very important point is communicate. Express. Don't be afraid to speak up. For example, if you have some deadline, then uh, maybe that task is dependent on some other person who may not be available before the deadline. So in that case, you have to, you don't hesitate about it. You say that, okay, XYZ has to do an important part of this task. And I feel that I uh, this cannot be completed in the given deadline. Probably your manager or supervisor will uh, direct you to someone else. But in that process, they get to know that you're quite responsible and you're serious about the deadlines been given to you. Next is ask help from those with more experience because that will go a long way. They are all aware that you are still learning and nobody will expect you to catch on with everything within your first week. But it is not uncommon to forget to cover everything while training an intern. So it's totally okay to speak up when someone asks you to do something that you have never done before. Next point is take initiative. As I said, show initiative while pursuing your career. Your role is not set in stone. Remember that the purpose of an internship is to test drive a career. It might not turn out that you will end up pursuing a slightly different direction than you would originally plan. So volunteer, uh, ask for additional work, volunteer to help with other projects. If you have the means to and communicate that, you will fee you feel like you're ready to help all sides of the team. Not only does this help out more people, but you're also showing that you can play a key role in supporting different sides of the business. Ask for additional work. Another important point is act like a professional. Yes, nothing is bigger turn off than for an employer than an intern being too casual and unprofessional. Professional means respecting the office decorum, turn always turning up on time, Supervisors will give you a certain set of instructions and you should try to apply yourself. So you have to follow the company rules and the established guidelines and also be punctual. Dress according to the nature of job. Dressing properly and observing office norms is very important and uh, present yourself well. Whenever you get a job after an internship, professionalism will help you excel in every field. Being punctual signals your commitment and sincerity on the other hand and show a very strong work ethic. Make sure you show a willingness to get all tasks assigned done on time. That may mean working longer hours or taking on extra responsibility, but be careful not to take this to the extreme. So take ownership and deliver results. Be well prepared. It may take a couple of weeks to get to know your supervisor and understand their expectations, but try your best to meet deadlines and do the task to the best of your ability. Organize your tasks and workplace to help focus on your responsibilities and manage your time much better. Understand and follow those set and established guidelines. Last point is develop your network. So it's like building office relationships. Even if you have started at your position, um, make sure that one of the first things you do is schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings with your supervisor and make them meaningful. When there is ongoing conversation, it's as if you are building any other relationship you think is important, be it friends or someone you are, um, any, anyone of your interest. If you are pursuing it seriously, then you are going to want to be able to communicate your interests win struggles and hopes on a regular basis. Whether it's asking for a coffee chat or linking up for lunch, don't be afraid to talk to your bosses or co-workers. They hired you for a reason and they want you to succeed. Something about your experience or interview convince them that out of all the people they met, they uh, you would be the best fit for the internship. They thought about it. So you have to overcome the imposter syndrome, which is doubting your capabilities so don't shy away. It can feel very real, but don't let that stop you from creating lasting relationships when you have been doing such great work already. You deserve to be there. Networking, growing, learning. Put effort and time into sitting with your other co-workers at lunch or in break room. Just being friendly in general or throwing a smile here and there could go a long way. It can seem intimidating to strike up conversation with someone 5, 10 or even 20 plus years into their career. But your co-workers all understand what it's like to start fresh at a job. They want to help you succeed and see you grow. And if you put yourself out there, those people can become your biggest cheerleaders. So you have to develop your network. Being an intern at a company can bring a wide range of benefits. 
as well as experience and the opportunity to learn. It also puts you in touch with a whole new group of people. Developing a good rapport and friendly relationships with colleagues is crucial for any intern. Getting on well with those around you makes it easier for you to work as a team. Teamwork and collaborations are skills that employers value. What's more, developing relationships with colleagues can deliver many tangible benefits. If your colleagues see you as a valued team member, they might lobby on your behalf to give you a full-time position. Even if they can't help you stay at your current firm, having a strong professional network will help your future job hunt. They may be able to refer you to friends and colleagues with other organization, be it for an open position or an informational interview. So what can you do to build connections? To start, try to learn from other people at your organization. Even every company has a few social butterflies, observe them. Second is offer to help your colleagues whenever you can. Make yourself essential to their daily workflows. Forming relationships within your team and throughout the organization will make you memorable and help you create a network that could be useful in the future. Third, remember to go to meetings early and use that extra time to chat with your colleagues. Ask them how their weekends were or about a cool accessory you saw on their desk or in their virtual background. Finally, take advantage of lunch and coffee breaks. This might be harder now that everything is online, but it can be done. During your first week, reach out to various team members and ask if they have time for a quick one-on-one. -on -one. Tell them you would love to learn more about the work they do and come prepared with a couple of questions. So basically, the more visible you are, it is easier for you to find common ground. All this with all these points working, definitely you can make a difference in your organization where you're working as an intern. And there are many chances that it will get converted into a full-time job. That's all for now. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.